Uh, Hello and welcome to uh, this session of our Southside Sunday School lesson, um, our Bible study lesson. Today we're talking about Abraham and Lot and family rights. So the point in this lesson is to trust God when challenged over your rights or possessions. And today we're in Genesis. Open almost any source of social media, new media or traditional media, and you'll find a platform awash in conflict, debate, and one-upmanship, especially during an election year like this one. It seems that civil discourse and listening have become a lost art. The saga of Abraham and Lot proves that some things about human nature never change. We've often heard people say, if you don't defend yourself, who will? It's the bent of self-preservation that often rules the day in relationships. As a family counselor might put it, do you want to be right or do you want to be married? Sometimes being right, being favored, or winning the property line battle is just not worth it. We learn from Scripture that we are to be makers of peace in our personal relationships and families. Often, this requires sacrifice. This takes a Christ-like faith and a charitable trust in God that He will work things out in His way, in His way, and in His time. Um, <clears throat> and I'll add something a little further to that: that we're just to be peacemakers in general. And it's kind of funny that I'm doing this lesson right now. Uh, yesterday, I had to go to a federal court trial, and uh, I was walking on the sidewalk. And now, you know, so I'm a Princeton native, and, you know, this is where I work, this is where I live. And I don't really think anybody in Paducah, in McCracken County, knows me. But I was walking down the sidewalk. Of course, I'm in my police uniform uh, going into the courthouse to testify. And out of nowhere, there's a car that drives down the street. I don't. I didn't recognize the person or the car, but he flips me the middle finger, and we all know what that means. And so I just kind of looked, and I looked again, and then you know he he put it away, put his hand down, and put it back in, and he looked at me, and I was like, I was the only one on the sidewalk, you know, walking. I was the only one around, and so I was like, okay, and then I just waved at him. Um, what's the point of returning evil for evil? Um, to be a peacemaker. Did it hurt me any? No. Um, it doesn't bother me. It just kind of threw me off because I'm like, who is that? And it was probably just because I was in my police uniform. Probably not a fan of law enforcement. It happens. Um, and that's his right to do that. But it just, it threw me off. So it's kind of a funny example that happened to me just recently um, to not be in conflict for things that don't matter. You know, it didn't hurt me at all. It's his middle finger, so he's the one that's going to have the cramp, or he's the one that had to put forth the effort. I just waved back at him, um, you know. So it's just good example. Keep the peace. So our first question, who in your circle really takes competition to the next level? Do you have a family member or friends or I, I know some people that have whatever you've done, they've done three or four times as good, or if you haven't done it, they've done it, or if they haven't done it, they've got a ticket to do it. I know people like that. Uh, maybe they're telling the truth. Maybe they're embellishing. Maybe they're lying. Uh, not 100% sure, but we all have those people in our lives, in our families or our friendship circles or whatever the case may be, that has just done it better than you or takes the competition way higher. Um, has to get the last word in, whatever the case may be. So Genesis 13, 5 through 8. Now Lot, who was moving about with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. But the land could not support them while they stayed together. For their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together. And quarreling arose between Abram's herders and Lot's. The Canaanites and the Perizzites were also living in the land at the time. So Abram said to Lot, Let's not have any quarreling between you and me, or between your herders and mine, for we are close relatives. 
In Genesis 12, God promised to bless Abram and give him vast lands, properties, livestock, riches, and his own nation. Abram's offspring would exceed the number of dust or grains of sand. When Abram left for God's promised land, he journeyed with his wife, Sarai, and his nephew, Lot. As we enter chapter 13, God has blessed Abram and his nephew with riches and livestock, as we've read. So Abram seemed to have it all, except he still had no son, no heir. Perhaps he was tempted to rationalize God's promise of a son and would, at age 75, consider Lot as a sort of surrogate answer to his prayer and God's promise. Kind of went out on his own uh, thought process uh, versus trusting in God's promise. So when have you seen, I'm sorry, where do you see possessions causing conflict in today's world? Um, you know, I, I know how people are about their property, about their land, about whatever, and you better believe if somebody steps just a single toe on their land, they're about to come out swinging or, or, or whatever the case may be. Um, we get really um, defensive with our property and stuff like that. Now, not to say that if, you know, something's getting stolen from your property, by all means, you have to do um, what you have to do with that. But, I mean, some people just get upset, like, tell those kids to quit doing this and walking that and whatever. We have people that, you know, there are little side streets in Princeton. You know, sometimes we'll get calls that kids are out, you know, shooting basketball and stuff like that in the street. Okay, so probably not the best place for them to do it, but, I mean, at least they're not out, you know, committing crimes. At least they're not out doing drugs and things like that. And so I want to kind of get, um, you know, I, I want to kind of talk to people and say, well, you're calling and complaining. Now, if they're not getting, you know, if you're coming down the street and they're not getting out of the way, I mean, that's one thing. But, you know, just complaining, like they're, they're being kids. Just let them shoot basketball. Let them play, um, you know, in that sense. So our possessions, they can cause conflict um, in today's world. So like Abram, believers should go to one another alone and work out their differences. And, like Abram, when we discuss our difficulties with other persons, we should follow Abram's example by seeking to restore that person gently. But, watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Uh, we, that's in Galatians. Um, you know, we should go and help restore people that have committed sin, brothers or sisters. Now, brothers go help brothers, sisters go help sisters. Uh, in that sense, uh, you know, if it's a guy, a guy needs to go. If it's a girl, a girl needs to go. Um, you know, keep that biblical. That way you don't get tempted um, in, in some issue, okay? But as brothers and sisters in Christ, we should come to each other when they've committed sin, when they've hurt uh, somebody, or when they've been hurt, whatever the case may be. But we should come alongside them uh, and, and restore them. Uh, I had a conflict years ago, and I had a brother come to me, and really, he wasn't like justifying what I did, but he came and he was like, look, we're sinners. It's going to happen, but we have to fight that. We, we have to fight that temptation, that flesh, whatever the case may be. We have to fight that. Um, so don't stay in the penalty box is pretty much what he was saying. Paul Washer says that, um, you know, if you've sinned, do not put yourself in the penalty box. It's not like a timeout. You've got to get back out there. Yes, you've sinned. Kill it. Repent of it. Don't go back to it. Don't put yourself in the penalty box. Our blessings may sometimes come through discomfort, but like Abram, we should remain calm and kind, not get all upset and out of sorts. You know, I've been to, I've been the police for a, a, almost 11 years now, and man, you want to talk about people getting upset over nothing. I have seen it. It is crazy, and I try to be as gentle as I can and calm them down and say, is it really worth all that? You know, is it really worth you getting this upset and losing a brother or a sister or a friend or a wife, husband, child, whatever the case may be? So uh, come to them with gentleness and meekness. So personal rights and possessions can be a source of conflict. And next, we see that we must place the needs of others before our own. It's hard to do, but we have to do it. Genesis 13, 9 through 11. Is not the whole land before you. Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. 
Lot looked around and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan toward Zar was well watered like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out toward the east. The two men parted company. So Abram sought a peaceful solution to his problem with Lot. He went and said, you choose this and I'll choose that. You go first and then I'll go. Uh, Abram took the initiative to resolve conflict and avoided escalating it. Abram reasoned with Lot and discussed their options for parting ways and resettling in opposite directions. Throughout the conversation, Abram remained direct about the conflict and was diplomatic by seeking a solution rather than dwelling on whose fault it may have been or causing the conflict. You ever do that before? Well, if you hadn't done this, I wouldn't have done that. You ever, you ever been there before? I know that I have, sadly, um, and, and we shouldn't, you know, it, I know it happens. Well, but that's true. If they hadn't done this, I wouldn't have done that. Well, you still shouldn't do that if they did whatever they did. You know, if you hadn't said this to me, I wouldn't have said that back to you. Um, but we have to take accountability for our own actions and not try to judge fault rather than say, okay, look, this has happened. Let's settle it peacefully because I am willing to give up my comfort. Um, so Abram was gracious and deferred to Lot, giving him his first choice of land options. Lot jumped at the opportunity to choose first. He chose the Jordan Valley, which was lush and green because it was well watered. There was a noticeable lack of restraint in Lot. He gave no thought to dividing the lush lands of the plains. The land he chose was easy money, but Lot was short-sighted. He chose profits over, over protecting his family's future from the evil influences of neighboring Sodom. And we all have know what happened after that. So, to recap, in Philippians 2, 3 through 4, it tells us, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. Um, you know, when we uh, help somebody out, give somebody money, uh, go and donate our time to, you know, help somebody move, help clean up their yard, whatever the case may be. Lend them, borrow, let them borrow our stuff. We shouldn't do it out of selfish ambition. Like, well, but you owe me. Um, don't look to get things back. Just look to help bless others with what you have, whether that be your time, your money, your resources, um, your possessions, uh, you know, borrow your trailer, uh, borrow your chainsaw, borrow your lawnmower, just whatever the case may be. Um, I don't look for, you know, okay, well, but he'll probably pay me back. Remember, you owe me. Um, well, let's not do that. Let's not look for a payback. Let's just look to be a blessing to people and help people out. Um, and to be honest with you, I've had that in my life where it's been kind of difficult for me to give up time to help somebody because I really don't have enough money to help somebody. But you know, it's difficult when you have uh, children and a wife and uh, work and stuff like that. It, it's difficult to get out and help somebody else out with your time. But after it was all said and done, with the display that they had of uh, gratitude, it really made me feel good. And then in the end, I'm like, hey, give God the glory because he's the one that allows me to do this. So Abram reminds us to place the needs of others before our own. So when have you benefited from someone placing your needs above their own? Have you ever had that happen where someone um, kind of thought about you before they thought about themselves or, um, you know, kind of came and helped you out before? I've, I've had that happen before. I remember I've had some long days in this job. Um, and <clears throat> when, when those days happen, um, you know, I'll have to rush and go get, you know, my children and um, you know, rush around. I got to come home and change and go back and get them and do that. But like some of my family, my sister, my mom, you know, they'll step up and they'll be like, hey, you had a long day. I'll go get the kids and I'll let them hang out at the house for a little while. Um, that way you can just go home and you can, you know, relax and whatever the case may be. You've had a long day. So I've had family really step up and help out in areas like that. Uh, you know, they we've had to scramble because I've had to work late or whatever. So they'll come and they'll help. And I'm so grateful and gracious um, that they came along and helped. And I'm always looking for opportunities to help them as well. So in the next verse, we see that we must trust God with the outcome 
of our circumstances and our decisions. So Genesis 13, 14 through 18. The Lord said to Abram after Lot had parted from him, Look around from where you are, to the north and south, to the east and west. All the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Walk, go, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. So Abram went to live near the great trees of Mamre and Hebron, where he pitched his tents. There he built an altar to the Lord. So to better understand God's promise to Abram, consider God's premise for blessing him. Originally, God told Abram, go from your country and from your people. That's in Genesis 12, 1. Lot was a relative, his nephew. God's promise did not seem to include Abram's current relatives. The Lord requires full obedience and full compliance with his commands. It's got to be all or nothing. can't be just a little bit here or there, but, you know, if he says go and do this and do that. Well, he's specific about it, and that's what he means. So Abram was a man of great faith a spiritual man of great consequence. But when God showed Abram his land and promised, to your offspring I will give this land, the Lord did not mention his current relatives. He didn't mention anybody else that he was around. He said, you and your offspring. So why is worship such a good response to receiving God's blessings? When we're grateful, when we have gratitude, when we're thankful that God has come through on promises, uh, because if he promises you something, he's going to come through. Um, so you have to worship him through that. You have to, um, you know, you, it, it's like, okay, you did this for me. Thanks, love you, and then just go about your business. Man, a daily worship of your sacrificial life, and I, I mean in the spiritual sense, daily worship, you know, it, it's hard. I'm a realist, you know. Now, it's not all cupcakes and rainbows. Like, I literally take Paul's uh, teaching of work out your salvation with trembling and fear, for it's God that works in you, okay? It's always God at work in me. Work out your salvation with trembling and fear, and I have to do that. I have to kick myself in the rear end and remind myself, hey, did you pray today? Did you read the word that you say that you love and you cherish? Did you go to your Heavenly Father and talk to Him? and have conversations with him? Did you worship him? Did you get caught up in conversation that you weren't supposed to have? Uh, crude joking, whatever the case may be. Um, did you do your daily worship? And I'm not talking about singing songs and whatever. I'm talking about living your life for Christ that you say that you have. Daily worship. It's important, especially when receiving God's blessings. So Lot, on the other hand, lost everything. Two angels warned Lot that Sodom was about to be destroyed. Lot's wife and son's son-in-laws son died. Lot ran from the destruction and lived in a cave. God used this season of unwelcome conflict and tension to move Lot away, leaving Abram to trust more fully in the promises of God. Abram was now in the position and the place of God's intended blessing. He eventually obeyed all the Lord commanded him, and some 4,000 years after Abram, his offspring lives, I'm sorry, his offspring lives today in the same land we know as Israel. So when has God's outcome been more than you expected? When, when have you um, asked and received more than you asked? Because <clears throat> I know every single day I pray for my family's protection. I pray for my two sons at school. I pray for their protection. I pray for the school's protection. I pray that the Lord protect my daughter, my two-year-old daughter throughout the day. I pray that he protect my wife throughout the day. So much conflict in the world right now, everywhere. Anywhere and everywhere, there's conflict, there's evil, there's whatever the case may be. And I pray for all of their protection. And he always comes through. He always protects them, sees them through the day. And that is more than enough for me to worship him. Because when we get together at the end of the day with each other, He's, he's come through with uh, his blessings. He's come through with that. Um, so we have to trust in him. Um, we, we have to trust him. And that's the point. Trust God when challenged over your rights or possessions. All right. So choose one of these applications. Go directly to God. Start by considering where you may have potential family conflict. 
Ask God for wisdom and guidance in this situation. Go directly to the source. When you're aware of a potential family conflict, take the initiative by going directly to the person, seeking a peaceful solution. Avoid discussing the problem with others as that can escalate the situation. I've been there before. You know, when we have a problem with somebody else, don't go discuss it with others. Um, go to God, get in the word, and see what he says about it. If you have a trusted biblical friend, let me emphasize the biblical friend, the Christian friend, the true Christian friend, because you don't want a friend that's going to say, well, hey, they did that to you. You have every right to do this to them. You've got every right because they shouldn't have done that, so you should do this. That is not good advice. Um, and you might want to look for other friends. You might actually want to tell that person to, uh, to reevaluate their life because we're, if we are true biblical Christians, we are going to say, let's look at the Word. Let's pray to God. Let's see what, the, uh, what Christ would do in this situation. So do not escalate things. Go to God and go to the Word. And then uh, go diplomatically. When you meet, don't be argumentative or respond with emotional expression. Go with a godly goal, res restoration. You know, I can't stand it whenever I'm just trying to talk to somebody and they get mad, upset, scream, yell, cuss. Hey, look, I'm just talking with you. I'm just having a conversation. And a lot of times, they get more hyped up when you don't. It's like they want to get a rise out of you. And it's like, hey, man, just calm down. You know, we're just... We're just trying to help each other. I'm just trying to help you out. I'm trying to help the situation out. Don't be argumentative. Be loving. Be gentle. Be kind. Understanding. All long suffering, not temperamental. Uh, thank you guys for joining in this session. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope that if you've got conflict going on, that you go to those people um, biblically and that you can settle it. And the Bible says that if it depends on you to make peace with people, then you should make peace doesn't mean that they have to make peace with you. Uh, that's on them, but you do what God tells you to do. So thank you very much. Hope you have a great week.